Chris woke early with sunlight streaming through the living room window. When the events of the night before flooded into her mind, she decided to drive straight down to the police station. Chief Chalmers isn't here on Sundays. His day of rest. Not today, though. Right now, he's seeing to that mess over there at the boardwalk. Oh, I need some help. Will you read this? What is this? You got a problem, little lady? You missing a boyfriend? I'm not little, and my problem isn't a boy. It's that note. Someone slid it under my door last night. Well, could you look at it, please? Mm, this doesn't make sense. Looks like a kid's handwriting to me. Written in crayon, right? Magic marker. And it wasn't <laughs> written by a kid. Don't you recognize those names? Yeah, yeah, sure. They're the kids that were hurt last night. Terrible accident. Yeah, but doesn't that note sound like it wasn't an accident? Isn't it a warning that there might be other accidents? Could be, I guess. Could be a joke. Someone trying to scare you. You have a fight with your boyfriend lately? My boyfriend would never write a crazy note like this. <sighs> Look, miss. Chief Chalmers has his hands full right now, but as soon as he comes in, I'll give him this. If there's anything connecting this note with the crash, he'll probably call you, okay? Well, could I have my note back, please? I'd better keep it, miss. We'll follow up on this, I promise you. Tess watched him put the note in the drawer and knew he wouldn't do anything about it. Later, she met Gina at the ice cream shop. Mm, it's not that I don't believe there was a note, Tess. It's just that it has to be a joke. A really mean one, but a joke. I hate to see you get all upset over it. Gina, doesn't it sound to you like it means the crash was no accident? Oh, let's wait and see what the police say, okay? Come on, relax. Finish your chunky monkey ice cream. <laughs> By the way, I asked my dad about any other accidents at the boardwalk. He hates talking about stuff like that. He did say that some guy committed suicide in the funhouse a long time ago. He hung himself. Oh, yuck. No kidding. No wonder I was never crazy about that place. Who was it? Daddy wouldn't say. I wonder why we never heard about it before. It happened before we were born. Oh. I guess it's not the kind of thing people like to talk about. No, I guess not. Hey, don't get uptight about the note. Let's wait and see what Chief Chalmers comes up with. <sighs> Just don't be surprised if it turns out I'm right. And I am going to say I told you so. <laughs> sure you will. Look, why not stay at my house tonight? No school tomorrow, did you know? It's closed out of respect for Dade. Tess gratefully accepted Gina's offer to stay overnight. She knew Gina's house was packed to the roof with kids and toys and pets, so it would be safe and relaxing. That evening at the Jambonis, nobody even mentioned the devil's elbow. But lying in her bed that night, Tess couldn't get to sleep. Those vivid purple words in magic marker kept dancing in front of her eyes. Who will be next? It could be you. It could be you. It could be you. It could be you. I saw her. She went to the police with my poem. They laughed at her, I bet have to hand it to her, though. She stayed right there in the condo. <laughs> With all the lights on. Then last night, she slept at the Jambonis. Okay by me. There's plenty of time. After all, Lila O'Hare's journal was there a long time before I read it. Lila left those blank pages in her diary after she and Tully lost the boardwalk. But then she began writing again. My Tully is gone. People are saying that what he did was cowardly, but Tully was no coward. He did it for me and the baby. He didn't know, that poor sweet man, that the insurance company wouldn't pay off in a suicide case. How am I going to take care of our baby when it comes? The man was dead? I bet those guys who took the boardwalk from him didn't even feel guilty. My dad wouldn't. He'd say, look, a guy couldn't hack it. Is it my fault? Well, yes, actually. It could have been. If my father had been in on that deal, I hoped he hadn't, but... Look, the journal was in this trunk, in this attic, in this house. I read on. Buddy came to see me. He said I shouldn't worry. He'd take care of everything. He said they all felt guilty about buying the boardwalk. 
They never thought it would drive him to suicide. They didn't buy it. They stole it. But I have to let Buddy help me. I have no choice. I couldn't read anymore right then. I had these tiny little hammers tattooing the inside of my skull. As Tess was leaving the Giambone's house the next day, Gina gave her a present. Come on, Charlie, come on. Come on, here, Charlie, come on, come on. Here you go. Here, Tess. <laughs> Take Cheryl for company. She's our most affectionate cat. She loves to be petted. You can keep her until Shelly gets back. Oh, oh, thanks, Gina. She's beautiful. <laughs> Hello. I love cats. <laughs> Is she trained as an attack cat? <laughs> oh, sure. She's a... Tess put Trilby on her lap. She purred all the way home. When she got there, Tess went to her room and changed into her jeans and a yellow sweatshirt. Suddenly, the phone rang. Hello? Hi again, Tess. Listen, you probably won't be crazy about this idea, but my dad asked me this morning if I could get a bunch of kids together to go to the boardwalk. Just to show people that it's safe, you know. Beak and Sam are coming, and I think Guy Joe. Trudy might come, and Candace too. Oh, Gina, I don't want to go down there. Why can't we do something else? Come on, Tess. My dad hardly ever asks me for anything. Can't you come with me? Tess wanted to help. Gina's father had always been very kind to her, but she didn't want to go near the boardwalk. She knew that criminals often returned to the scene of their crime. Still, she couldn't say that to Gina. Okay, I'll come. Oh, great. Listen, we'll just hang around in the funhouse, okay? No rides, not when you're so uptight. Could you pick me up? Yeah, sure. The funhouse has no windows, so... Well, I won't be able to see the devil's elbow. Maybe it won't be so grim. <laughs> <laughs> if it was, it'd have to be called the Grim House, and nobody would go, and we'd all be poor. <laughs> Tess hung up. Then she remembered she hadn't asked Gina if her father had heard from Chalmers about the investigation. She didn't want to ask her own father. He'd only make fun of her fears if she told him about the note. She'd rather talk to her friends about it. But when they all met, and she asked them, nobody in the group knew anything about the investigation except that the roller coaster was roped off with signs saying closed for repairs, and hardly anyone was about on the boardwalk. They all headed for the funhouse, with Gina, cheerful as always in her red shorts and flowered shirt, leading the way. Tess knew that Gina was trying to keep everyone's mind off the crash, but it didn't help. The screams of the victims still echoed in Tess's head. She kept looking over her shoulder, she had the strange feeling that someone was watching her.